Hi all, new tripod, and in the attic I found an Excella quartz heater. Two elements, tiny little fan in there, I might just crack this thing open later because I'm bored. But this will make a nice resistive ballast for various experiments using my Variac and rectifier assembly. And just gonna give it a turn on and let it cook off all that dust it's collected so it doesn't stink up the basement. Acquired some cheap heatsink compound because I was just using the original dried up stuff still smeared on the bridge rectifier from where I took it from the rear projection TV. But it's dried up, it's kind of old, and I'm pushing this bridge pretty close, if not above, its maximum rating, so it's going to need the best thermal contact it can get. So, I'm going to get that wiped off and then smear a bit of this goop on it and stick it back on the chassis. I also have been thinking of whether I want to use this rig to try popping the fluorescent tube or if I'm going to decide to use possibly the old ballast I have. I do have a, I believe it's for a F40T12, but it probably has enough voltage to force start a failed F15T8 which is the tube that I intend to pop later today. So I'm thinking why not use an already regulated ballast for the tube that should be able to survive far longer than the tube itself will. So in a little bit after I get this bridge mounted back I will investigate how feasible it would be to use an actual fluorescent ballast to kill a smaller fluorescent tube than what it was designed for. Well, apparently the camera batteries went dead and it shut off while I was tightening the bridge, but it's back on. I'll do some sort of load test at some point in the future. For now, I'm going to see how feasible it is to fire up a failed F15T8 on an F40T12 magnetic rapid start ballast. <laughs> 